can you summarize it for us? And um, okay. uh, you are now International Sustainability Director. So tell us about the journey. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be with all of you here today. Mm -hmm. So it's been 10 years already, time flies. Um, I joined Cartier in 2013. And before that, I worked in international law and philanthropy. I have a background in economics and international law. Uh, I was very lucky to grow up in a multicultural environment, grow up in different countries, and I've always been, um, I've also had the desire to contribute uh, to have a more meaningful world. So at Cartier, I have this unique opportunity to have impact uh, guided by my personal values uh, in the very fast-paced environment of the private sector. So what do I do exactly? I lead the international sustainability team. Uh, I have a small but amazing team full of energy. I'm mm -hmm. so lucky. And we work on all the social and environmental impacts that we have uh, as a company, so in our activities as a business. We report to an international uh, executive uh, committee member and we're also very lucky because our CEO is extremely committed and visionary on mm -hmm. these topics, and he does drive as well the sustainability agenda, which makes a big difference, I think. Um, and uh, we've been working on all the impacts, and I have to say that in the last 10 years, uh, I do see a few changes in sustainability that okay. have evolved. I think as a business, we have an increased responsibility uh, to uh, act facing global challenges, uh, acting in planetary boundaries. And I think we're also expected to act on more and more topics, uh, biodiversity being uh, you know, quite new uh, on our agenda as a company. And also, I think we have to collaborate more and more, both externally, and we're going to discuss this, but yeah. also in internally. We have to work with all the different functions and our employees and all our colleagues to really manage to achieve our uh, commitments. We have to work together. Well, this session is all about fostering <laughs> collaboration. So, I mean, you're in such a complex industry. Yeah. Um, driving collaboration must be such an important part of your role and, and the whole companies. Um, I, I guess, what is your vision for being a responsible leader? Um, and, uh, I mean, how important is collaboration? Collaboration is key. Uh, we are a leading jewelry luxury maison, uh, and as such, we have a big capacity to influence. And with this uh, responsibility, uh, well, power comes the responsibility to be uh, exemplary and also to drive change in our industry. Uh, sustainability has been anchored in Cartier's DNA forever. Uh, we have some creations that are passed down from a generation to another, uh, and uh, they are timeless both in design and physically, they're eternally repairable. And they contribute as well to the preservation of traditional and uh, um, uh, local craftsmanship. And we have a localized production too in France, Switzerland, and Italy. Oh, tell, tell us a little bit more about that. About the manufacturing yeah. sites? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, well, you know, watchmaking in Switzerland uh, is, uh, I is traditional there, and we have the jewelry branch as well that is there, and, uh, and in France as well, and in Italy. So we have an amazing new manufacturing site in Turin that has solar panels. Uh, wow. Yes, that we just uh, launched, so it's uh, amazing as well to see how in our operations we, we can really uh, implement what we're trying to do in our supply chain too. So if I go back a little bit, uh, we had uh, created a dedicated department on sustainability 18 years ago. And from the start, so in 2005, we had a collaboration because we also co-founded the Responsible Jewelry Council, the RJC, that uh, sets responsible uh, standards in the uh, jewelry and watchmaking supply chain on gold, diamonds, platinum group metals, amongst uh, other materials. And our commitments are implemented all through uh, the steps of our operations. So we mentioned uh, uh, our manufacturing sites, but also we uh, look at how we buy, of course, uh, where our raw materials come from, how they're transformed, and how we carry our day-to-day -day operations in our boutiques, our offices, and our manufacturing sites. It also goes further, how we contribute uh, to bring the industry together. Today, we do act with a renewed sense of urgency when we see the global challenges that we must uh, contribute to solve. Um, and this is why we're accelerating our actions. Uh, we're implementing our science-based climate targets. Uh, we're also working to protect and respect the people uh, that bring to life our creations near or far. And this is also why uh, we bring the industry together through collaborations, such as the Watch and Jewelry Initiative 2030 that you mentioned. 
uh, it's key for us to keep in mind some principles as well. We want to make sure we act as a leader by example. We want to make sure we consider all the impacts uh, long term when we take our uh, decisions. We want to avoid uh, disengagement. And finally, we also don't want to think in motion. That's a big principle we have. We don't have the luxury to wait to have all the answers. So we want to build both our knowledge and our concrete actions together. I, I mean, you, you mentioned a little bit about your supply chain there, and we've heard a lot about transparency throughout um, yes. today, and it's obviously yeah. a big area of focus for all corporates. Um, do you see almost a, a cultural shift happening? A and um, is business as usual changing, or is it you know, just pretty on the front of people's websites? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I do believe uh, business as usual is changing and that we're shifting from a very control and uh, you know, audit compliance approach with our suppliers mm. to a more of a collaborative partnership towards a common goal. Um, we have been collaborating for many years now with our suppliers, but also with our peers, our competitors uh, and other stakeholders. We do think that sustainability is a pre-competitive matter and that we have to work together. Uh, I already mentioned the RJC, the Responsible Jury Council in 2005. We went from 14 founding members to more than 1,600 members today. So that was quite successful. We also... In, in what kind of time frame? Well, from 2005 to, I would say, maybe 2020 to reach oh. 1,600 members. Um, that, we also that just sees that, yeah. that change happening. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, more recently, we founded working groups on colored gemstones with our competitors to improve the colored gemstone industry uh, by providing some tools, uh, for responsible tools for suppliers, uh, research and trainings. And another example I can, I can share is uh, the Swiss Better Gold, which is a public-private partnership uh, where I sit at the board. And uh, it's a great opportunity to help create and support responsible small-scale mines, artisanal and small-scale mines, um, towards better practices. And here, through this partnership, we were able to really help the small actors of the gold supply chain to have uh, social and environmental projects implemented. And the first project we financed uh, managed to bring electricity to the mine uh, and the surrounding village, which helped the mine as well drop its carbon emissions by 62%. Uh, so we've been having a lot of uh, great collaborations that were quite specific in topic in our supply chain. But we did see the need to go further uh, and add a layer uh, that is more transversal, uh, uh, to have a coordination of different topics, to be able to align on tools and methodologies. We all have the same uh, challenges. Uh, and this is one of the rationals why we created the Watch and Jewelry Initiative, to make sure as well that we could uh, embark the smaller actors that often lack resources uh, on this journey collectively. Mm. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, I guess there's that scale of being able to look at things holistically as yes. well, which is rather than big, big brand over here and small bespoke exactly. uh, parts of the supply chain down here. And, and you've mentioned the, um, the, the Watch and Jewelry Initiative 2030 in a little bit of detail, but I'd love to kind of get a little bit more depth on that and, and maybe some kind of, I guess, case studies on how it's currently being practiced. Yes. So in the last years, we've seen that there was really a need to accelerate our sustainability actions uh, because the world's most critical problems need uh, you know, uh, collective uh, action. And this is why in uh, April 2022, uh, driven by our company CEOs, which is very important, uh, we launched the Watch and Jewelry Initiative 2030. It is the first time in the history that an initiative brings together the watch and the jewelry brands together uh, across the, the world. Mm. Uh, we have 37 members already, uh, which is uh, pretty impressive. And our wish is to unite all these actors uh, around a common set of uh, sustainability goals to transform the industry in a, in a systemic way. Um, by joining forces, we have the objective to accelerate our actions, but as well to maximize our impacts and also to unlock new opportunities that we can only reach collectively to transform our industry. Uh, we have been uh, accelerating, especially since uh, July 2022, when we had the nomination of uh, Iris van der Wicken as our executive director. She's been doing an amazing job in bringing us together to work. 
Um, so the, from the start, we had some key principles in mind. I think the first one uh, was that we wanted an initiative that was CEO-driven, because you can only reach uh, transformation through transversal and uh, you know, systemic uh, change. Yeah. So you need to have your CEO that is on board and actually a driver uh, if you want to have the impact that is needed. Otherwise, it kind of feels like a side of desk exercise by exactly. a department over here. Exactly. We all know that we are switching not towards a sustainability strategy anymore, but just integrating sustainability in the business strategy, which is how you make the difference. We also wanted during this, uh, this first start, uh, when we thought about the initiative, to have um, an inclusive and open uh, initiative, open to all brands from geographies and sizes, uh, because we need all sizes. And we want it to be data-driven, to show progress as well internally, but also collectively as uh, an initiative. And finally, we did not want to reinvent anything, so we wanted to take into account existing frameworks, such as the SBTI on climate, uh, but also go further uh, to integrate newer areas of focus, such as biodiversity. We know that we don't have all the tools that have been uh, shared and aligned yet, but we know we need to accelerate, and our industry uh, is, uh, needs the data as well, because there is, it's missing to apply some of the tools that we have on biodiversity. Um, so that's the, the key principles. Yeah. Uh, we have three big goals. Uh, you won't be surprised. Uh, members, when they join, have to commit to three goals and underlining as well commitments to make sure they start their journey towards reaching these big goals. The first one is uh, around uh, climate resilience. Uh, the members have to, of course, reduce their carbon emissions in line with the 1.5 uh, degree trajectory. Uh, this is where I think we will have a, a great collaboration because we all struggle with our scope three. Uh, Cartier represents 99% uh, of our carbon footprint, but we still need to collect some data to refine the data to really understand where our levers are. Uh, so that's the big goal, uh, first one. The second one is on preserving resources. And here, members, when they join, they commit to uh, map their biodiversity and water impacts using a science-based credible framework. So we're using the SBTN, and they've just launched our guidelines, the guidance. Um, and this here will be key uh, to collect the data all along the value chain to, to use the tools like the GPS uh, tool. And the finally, the last goal we have is around fostering inclusiveness and want to make sure that we ensure responsible and inclusive uh, value chains. We've had some concrete actions that I can share as well uh, to conclude, because uh, I see time is uh, already <laughs> off. Uh, we've been uh, working on a best-in-class governance uh, following a wide stakeholder uh, consultation. We have a, almost a full board uh, as of this month. We have nine board members. We uh, created two fundamental partnerships, one with the UN Global Compact, one with UN Women. We have great experts on climate, human rights, and biodiversity that are working with us. So we have the Boston Consulting Group, we have Business uh, for Social Responsibility, and the Biodiversity Consultancy. Uh, and we've launched two pilots uh, a few months ago, uh, one on ESG data uh, and uh, uh, building a framework to measure, track, uh, progress, and also report as an initiative on the, on the goals we have set for ourselves and also to help members prepare for the evolving uh, regulatory landscape that wow. we all uh, see is coming. Um, so maybe to conclude, I would say that what we've uh, created as an industry can be replicated to others, yeah. uh, because we know now that businesses uh, must take the lead mm. uh, and that the world's most critical problems um, go further than the capacity of only one organization's skills, leadership, or resources. So in reality, sustainability is a collective uh, yeah. journey. Yeah. Well, it, it sounds like you're an exceptionally busy person, and it's, um, it's great to hear some of the <laughs> things that you've been doing. And I'd love to chat for another 30 minutes, um, but we have another uh, globally recognizable brand. Yes. We've got Microsoft um, uh, coming on stage now, talking about how they're fostering collaboration. So. Um, Please uh, give a hand. Thank you very Alicia. much. Thank you so much. Thank you.